everybody so welcome back so today we are going to get this ready to fire up so i'm going to get it commissioned today so what does that mean well we're going to fit oil filter put the engine oil in top up the clutch fluid top up the brake fluid on the front and the rear caliper uh, fill up the water hopefully the temperatures not too too low so we can get away with that because we can't run any antifreeze in a race bike and then I'll fit the power commander which will be going underneath the seat unit and just connect that all in and then we'll chuck a bit of fuel in we'll turn it over a, f a couple of times without um, the spark plugs connected just to get some oil around the engine and then we'll hopefully go for an initial start Okay, so first things first, what I'm going to do is take off the fairing so that I can get into the oil filler cap and the drain plug and everything like that. Okay, let's get that done. Okay, first things first, what I need to do on the uh, drain plug is just drill a hole in so I can wire lock this shut as per the AC reg. So I'm just going to do that quickly. We'll use a little 2mm drill and just come in at an angle. Okay, let's quickly do that. There you go, one drilled hole just goes through so that we can secure wire lock as per the AC regs. So just stick that back in and tighten it up. Bit of new oil filter, so this one's got the nuts so you can help tighten it up a little bit. What I'm going to do. Just pre-fill this with a little bit of oil just to soak it down. So for this first um, oil fill up I'm using part synthetic oil primarily because I'd like the engine to bed in a little bit before I go to fully synthetic so my first run on an engine is always done on part synthetic so I'll have this going for the dyno with this oil in um, and then I might even do the first track day of it, but what I'll do before I race is drop this out and then put a fully synthetic oil in for the racing. So it's 10W40 part synthetic oil. Um, it's just just from a Halfords, which is a local motor factors to us. I'll get a better oil when I get to the racing, usually Castrol racing. I use the 10W40. Okay, so let's just stick some oil in here. So there's a lot of mixed opinions around whether you pre-fill your filter. I like to do it just because it means that when you're putting this in cold, as I am at the moment, you'll get a more accurate filler, uh, fill up of the engine. So much, much better position to be in. And you'll see this soaks up quite a bit of oil. So it's always handy to do this. And then you'll also, you'll also know that the first time you turn the engine over, the oil circuit doesn't have a massive air gap in the filter that it's got to fill up first while you're turning that engine over so it just helps everything uh, bed in a lot quicker when you do that first turnover of the circuit and then just dab a little bit on your seal so you know that, that beds in properly now I've seen people welly these up. You only need to put this hand tight and then just a little bit of a quarter turn. Otherwise it can become incredibly difficult to remove. Let's get that on the bike now. Let's just, just top the oil up last little bit. There we go. Let's stick that on the bike. So there you go, that was just tightened up, hand tight and then a little quarter turn. You'll see there's a little hole drilled through this as well so you can wire lock this off. A little tip, if you don't have something to wire lock the oil filter with, you can put a really large Jubilee clip round. Let me just show you that on one of my other bikes. So the other way you can tie off your oil filter 
which I've done on here is to go between the drain plug and the oil filter with a large Jubilee clip. And that's because I didn't have any filters with the little locking nut on the bottom. So it's a nice little way to get yourself out of jail when you need to. Okay, so we need to now fill the oil up. So what I'm gonna do is just pop the relays and everything out of the way. And then just undo the filler cap. Okay, let's get that filled up now then. Okay, so you can see we've got the oil level filled up to just below the maximum level at the moment. Um, I didn't need to use the funnel in the end because the oil can has got a nice pour in position. So I was able to do that without putting any mess in there, which is kind of nice. So all I'm going to do now is just put back in the filler cap and tighten that down and we are good to move on to the brakes. Right, sorry about that guys, just had an SD card error, so I'll just explain where I, I got up to. So I took the front of the fairing off so that we could easily access the master cylinder reservoir. Um, had just topped that up and was in the process of bleeding the first caliper. And you can just see we've just got some oil coming through there. What I'm going to do is just pop that off, go around to the other side and start bleeding the other one. solid lever that's all bled what I'm going to do now is just break clean everything because there's there's little patches of oil that have just sort of escaped as uh, you take everything on and off I'll also just add a little bit more fluid into into the reservoir um, you've got to be careful with that though because remember when when you start using this on track your brake fluid heats up so you don't want this at maximum really because it it can uh, give you problems whereas that's about halfway so I'll just I'll put a little smidge more in and then get the cap back on and then we will move on to doing the rear brake which will be good fun always is set up to bleed the rear caliper little funnel so I can get into the reservoir that then comes down to our master cylinder here the, obviously the line goes all the way through the hugger and then I've got the hose ready to go on the actual caliper itself so what I'm going to do I'm just going to start pumping away and uh, we'll get some fluid into this system and see what happens Okay, so that's the uh, rear brake blade. Got a nice firm lever and the caliper works properly. I've just given it a spray down of um, brake cleaner because there's a little bit of spillage everywhere. So that's all good. Just going to stick the back wheel back on and we'll move over to doing the clutch master cylinder and circuit. back on don't worry about the fact I haven't talked that it's just because I'm chucking it on so that we can move on to the next piece okay last bit of bleeding we're gonna do the 
clutch. So we'll just take that off. Take out the last bit of horrible fluid that was in there. So that we know that we've got a nice clean empty reservoir. Okay, uh, roughly the same principle as bleeding brakes. We'll fill the master cylinder up and there's a bleed nipple on top of the slave cylinder so this is where we'll bleed it from so it's just a little eight mil okay so stick some brake fluid in there and let's start the process of bleeding this through Okay, so nice, nice action on the clutch lever there. We've topped up the reservoir to just blow maximum, and the little bleed cap is just back on, and that's been tightened and cleaned around there as well. So that's the clutch system bled, so the slave is all back together. What I'm going to do now, remove the tank, and we're going to start filling the water up. Okay, so the filler cap for the water reservoir is off. All I'm going to do is fill with water and I'm just going to pump all of these hoses as I do that to make sure we get water all the way through the system. You used to, on some of the earlier models, you used to get a bleed valve on the top of the uh, T-piece here. The only thing you've got nowadays is this drain which is quite low in the system so we'll just keep pumping the pipes to get the water to move around as we fill it up. Okay, let's get on with it. Okay, so a little bit of water spilled out, but basically all I do, as you can hear, hopefully in the water system, is you just keep filling the pipes until you stop hearing air move out from them. So, it as the water moves around the system, it will get a little bit better as well. So, some of you may have noticed I've got a slightly different tank on here. It's come off the, my other bike just because it's got fuel in there. So it's just going to help me to get the bike started. So I'm just going to resecure this and then, uh, well, why not? Should we go for a start and see if uh, this thing actually fires up? See what happens then. Oh, we've got a defective um, temperature gauge, which is a bit annoying. Common problem, but hey ho. Pump works, which is good news. Moment of truth. Okay, so <laughs> she runs. Um, idols crap. So hang on a second. Let's just loosen this off and see if we can get idling.
Okay, um, lots of smoke coming off of the exhaust where I've used the um, copper grease just to stick that together, but nothing's leaking, which is a positive sign. She starts, the idle's really, really rough, but I, that was to be expected with the fact that she's just been put together and doesn't have anything at her dating positions, but there we go. After all that work, she's finally started. Uh, thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, chuck us a like. If you've got any questions or comments, put them down below and I'll try to answer them as quickly as possible. And if you're not a subscriber to the channel, would really welcome you as a subscriber. Next, next session is dyno time for this and get it set up and running properly. And then uh, book a track day and see what we can do with this. Okay, thanks for watching. Cheers for now. Bye.